The two races live in uneasy peace. The Titans notice nothing besides their artifact, and the dwarves leave it alone. Those dwarves are understandably nervous, living so close to their enemy, so they keep a stock of weapons handy. I don't think they've actually pulled them out for years, but having them available makes them feel more secure. What exactly is the Titan's purpose? Why'd you make them? The Citadel is a big place. It needed a lot of workers to keep it running smoothly. Instead of enslaving the men or working the Citadel ourselves, we tailor-made a race to do it for us. We also designed them to protect the Citadel, and ironically, the Mench as well. Somehow, they've perverted this defensive behavior to focus on the Crystal Artifact to the exclusion of everything else. Of course, their unnatural interest in this piece of Sartan refuse should disappear when the Citadel is open. The unification will trigger the imprinted behavior that will summon the Titans into the Citadel. They should start it operating and they'll forget about everything in their previous lives. What's the Titan's magic sense like? The Titans had to be given the power to sense the position of objects, even though the objects might be out of sight. This was principally for the operation and repair of the Citadel after it started working. Because they were equipped with this sense, we decided not to give them eyes. They see better than you or I, and they track better than any scout since they already know the location of something even when they're away from it. How is the Citadel a city? We intended the Citadel to house everyone, the humans, the elves, and the dwarves, all together. Naturally, this couldn't happen until they learned to live peacefully among each other. So it's all's wait, empty and dead, for the unification. How is the Citadel a power station? Brian has a role in the whole. Following the interconnection, Brian was to supply power to the other realms. Its four suns produce more than enough energy for itself and the other world. The Citadel was supposed to control the flow of energy from the suns through the Death Gate into the other worlds. How about we talk about something else? Suit yourself. Give me one good reason why I shouldn't blow you away. If you so much as look at me wrong, my dragon will find out what you're made of and decorate the tree with it. Where'd you get these transporter discs? They're just something I picked up. Rather handy, don't you think? I had to plant the white one in the ground to keep the children from wandering off with it. I wouldn't want to appear in the middle of the campfire. <laughs> if I didn't have them, I'd have to rely on my pet dragon to take me everywhere, and getting him out of bed could blow a whole day. As far as I know, there's no other way back to the nearest tree. I have had enough. Goodbye, Sartan. Well, I can't say I'm sorry to see you go, Haplo. But take care. You have many trials ahead of you. The fate of the world rests on your shoulders. You're welcome to take that disc. I can always get my dragon to ferry me back and forth. But unless I miss my guess, you don't have a pet dragon. Without the disc, you're going to have to find another way back to the other tree.
Thank you! Oh, thank you! How did you manage to get it? Never mind. I know that you're a wizard, but you've done something that my people have tried to do for generations. First you save my life, then you regain the golden staff. If there is anything I can do for you, just tell me. Now that I have the golden staff, she'll have to take me seriously as a fellow monarch. But even if I gain her respect with the staff, she still probably won't like me very much unless I can give her something nice, something as pretty as she is. Then, once she's feeling kindly towards me, I need something to keep me from stumbling all over my words. I can never figure out anything to say.
Thank you, sir. I have the golden staff, so she'll have to take me seriously as a fellow monarch. These flowers are perfect to make her look kindly upon me, but I still need the right words to say. Otherwise, I'll start stammering and looking foolish. I'll never get anywhere like that.